Hello, it's great to see you again. Once again, we're here in Vivat Books, the best bookshop in Kharkiv, to my mind. Uh, I encourage you to come down and decide for yourself. Yeah, and today we are going uh, we are going to discuss the third conditional. Okay. Uh, and guys, if you haven't seen our previous video on third conditional, please do that. Oh yes, links at the end and in the description below. Yeah, and Peter, could you tell us about the third conditional? Uh, what native speakers think when they use it? So, something to remember about the third conditional that makes it different from our other conditional forms. The third conditional is always impossible. Now, I don't know if our viewers have seen Back to the Future, or Back to the Future 2, mm -hmm. which is a very, very good film, but somebody yesterday in one of our lessons encouraged me to do something from that particular film to help them understand the third conditional. They asked me to draw out a timeline mm. and to show how different decisions create different timelines. If you remember the film Back to the Future 2, when they travel back to the past, they make a decision that affects their future and changes their reality. But of course, as we know, time travel is impossible. Yeah. So we think about what we could have done in the past that would affect our present situation now. As we've mentioned, I really encourage you to watch Lena's video uh, by with the song by Adele, If It Hadn't Been For Love. Yeah, that's a cover song. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Really helps you establish all the different changes to the singer's life if she had not fallen in love. So if she hadn't fallen in love, she wouldn't have hitchhiked to Birmingham. Yeah. And so she wouldn't have... Uh, took a train to Louisiana, and so she wouldn't have run through the blinding rain without a dollar to her name, and so she would not have seen the trouble that she's in. Oh, yeah. And so that she would not have gone to that part of town. Oh, she yeah. would not have tracked him down. <laughs> yeah. She would not have loaded up a 44, and so her present circumstances would be changed. She would not now be behind a jailhouse door. Oh, my God. You, you remember the lyrics? Oh yes, so, very catchy okay. song. Amazing. So, when we're thinking about our third conditional, we need our if clause plus past perfect. So that's had plus a verb in the past participle, followed by our modals. Could have, would have, should have, the things that would be different now. Then we use our verb to have and the past participle again. Hence why we have a very American saying though, we're imagining how our life would be different if we had done something in the past. But remember, that's impossible. So yeah. we get this saying, coulda, woulda, shoulda. When you some want somebody to stop talking about <laughs> things that they cannot change and focus on doing things in the present. All right, that's enough of me going on about the third conditional. I hope we're a little bit more familiar with the idea. But like we've said, if you're having any trouble, definitely check out our links in the description to review. Yeah, thank you very much for the explanation, uh, and I'm going to ask you a few questions in the third conditional. Okay, mm -hmm. let's think about how my life could have been different. Yeah, are, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what is the best decision you have ever made in your life, I mean your professional life, and what, who, uh, what would have happened if you had uh, made a different decision? That one? thankfully is quite easy. The best decision I've ever made in my professional life is to work for myself. And if I had made a different decision, I would be a lot more bored now. I think I would feel a lot less fulfilled. I like working, mm -hmm. but it's hard to work for other people when you can see them making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And I'm very much the kind of person who likes to work hard Mm -hmm. But it's difficult for me for a very long time to just keep my head down and work away. Uh, I have a bit of a curse. I have to speak up. So now the benefit of working for myself is that if I fail, mm -hmm. it's on my own terms. So I think the best decision I ever made was to work for myself. If I hadn't made that decision, mm -hmm. I would now be a lot less fulfilled. Uh, all right. If you had been offered a high paying full time uh, full time job when you were in college, mm. would you have dropped out of university 
uh, to take the job. Knowing me, I would not have, but, and I'm not really supposed to say this because I'm supposed to encourage education in all circumstances, I think that sometimes that's a good decision. Mm -hmm. I really value practical skills. I don't think I'd have been able to see it at the time, and I don't regret staying in education. I think it was right for me, mm -hmm. but I think that there are different ways to learn, and certainly other people get other valuable things from other experiences. So if I was offered a high paying job while I was in college, I'm afraid I'm no Bill Gates, I am no Mark Zuckerberg, I'd probably have stuck with it because that was what was valuable to me at the time. How would my life be different now if I had dropped out of university? I may be richer, but I would certainly not be as nuanced were developed in my thinking. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite valuable too. So neither path is better or worse to me, but I would probably have stuck with university. Mm -hmm. uh, and what do you think has been the most important invention of the last uh, 50 years? What would have been different if uh, this had never been invented? Well, the obvious answer is the internet, naturally. I think everybody would say that. In the last 50 years, the internet has completely revolutionized everything we do in our lives. It wouldn't be possible for me to talk to you like this without the internet. I don't think it's very likely I'd get my own television show straight away. So how would life be different without the internet? A lot of people think it would be negative. A lot of people think it would be positive without the internet. I am more towards the negative. I think life with the internet is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I certainly see where people are coming from when they talk about stress and constant work and never being able to switch off. But I like these things. I think the internet has brought people together mm -hmm. a lot more. So the most important invention in the last 50 years to me would be the internet. And life would be very different now because people would have less ability to connect with each other. They would not be able to see each other's lives. So they might even be less empathetic. A lot of people talk about the internet as making us uh, rather insular because we are detached from the people we talk to. So we feel that we are behind a screen. We are safe. Hence the rise of troll culture. Oh. But I truly think the internet allows us to empathize with people in different situations and to see different types of living and to imagine different ways of living. So if the internet had not been invented, we would be less empathetic, my opinion. All right. And I'm going to ask you just one question in the mixed conditional. Mm, tough stuff. Difficult times ahead for all of us, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have it in the That Was Our Song as well. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't be wishing yeah. I was free if it hadn't been for love. Mm. So I wouldn't be wishing it's about the present. Right? Yes, I wouldn't be wishing, and of course progressive because she's constantly wishing she yes. keeps wishing she does not stop wishing mm -hmm. okay so what is the best piece of advice you have ever received um how might your life be different if you had never received this advice what an interesting idea i need a moment to think about that best piece of advice that i have ever received probably came from my parents and it's really important advice and it's advice that I have trouble following. I am very stubborn by nature. I like to follow things through to their conclusion. I like to stick with things even when that's not the best idea. So they have told me, even though they admire this about me, my stoic nature, mm -hmm. It's okay to complain and it's okay to stop doing something if you don't like doing it, which is a really big development for me. In fact, one of my favorite singers, Eddie Argos from Art Brew, has a lyric in a song that uh, I think it's a metaphor. Something is too heavy. It's okay to put it down, mm. which I really like. Uh, so 
That is the best piece of advice I have ever received. And my life would be different because I would probably be very stressed and I might have burned out by now. I would be doing too many things. So it's okay to stop. It's good to have a tenacious, stoic nature and to stick to a project and really follow your passions. But something's not fun anymore. There's no reason to keep doing it. And I think that's a really valuable piece of advice that a lot of people ought to hear. Now, it's not that we can always stop doing the things we want to do. You can't just stop going into work, for example. <laughs> but it does help you evaluate and reevaluate and validate what is important to you. So, a long answer to a very deep question. Yeah, that was uh, a great piece of advice. Oh, um, yes. Thanks to my parents. Yeah. And thank you very much, Peter. Oh, thank you, Elena. It's it was great to very see you. interesting. Yes, yeah. indeed. Like we've said, check out our links in the description for our third conditional videos. Uh, please come visit Vivat Books. I really recommend it highly. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid of using conditionals. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely not. They can make your language richer. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Bye for now.